Olá, amigos. Hoje teremos o físico Nassim Haramein nos mostrando como os planetas circulam ao redor do Equador do Sol, dentro do nosso sistema solar. Saindo daquela ótica, como um disco rotacionando sempre no mesmo lugar e mostrando todo o movimento dos planetas, tanto externamente, né, como eles se movimentam no braço da galáxia onde nós estamos localizados, como internamente, qual é o fluxo energético que faz com que eles se rotacionem. Aqui aprenderemos a forma como a natureza, como o universo cria e mantém a vida em todas as escalas. Os matemáticos chamam esse padrão de torus. O torus é um sistema auto-organizado e está em todas as escalas de vida do nosso universo. Podemos ver esse padrão do torus desde a estrutura auto-organizada do átomo, nas partes de uma laranja, maçã e também em nosso corpo humano. O torus é o fluxo de energia em todas as escalas da existência. You know, if you have children, please, uh, if they go to school, they're all going to get told that the solar system looks something like this. Let, let me try to erase this. Okay, that the solar system looks something like this. Uh, that, that, that the sun is in the middle and the solar system and, and in my school we even, in a, even had a little machine with a little thing, a little crank you spun and the earth uh, went around the sun with the moon and everything and uh, so they tell you, oh yeah, that's the sun and then the, the planets go around like this in an elliptical course and depending on uh, the interaction of all the planets it's either elongated or more round Oh, you got all the planets like this in the solar system. Well, actually, that is absolutely incorrect. Okay? Uh, the thinking of the solar system in this matter is equivalent to thinking that the Earth is flat. Um, the solar system does not behave that way at all. In fact, the solar system uh, uh, behaves in a completely different way since... The sun is moving through space and the planets are flying around the sun generating this huge vortices as it follows the equator of the sun. That is a completely different picture. All right? It goes from flat to spacious to movement through space. And that makes a big difference. All of a sudden, you start to see that even planetary motion, solar motions around the galaxy, galactic motion, supercluster motion, and so on, all have this elliptical, vortecular dynamics of space. They all have this torque dynamic through space. And, uh, and if you look at the Earth, on this vortex, you could say that this is 2000, you know, 2000 for instance, and this would be then uh, 2000, 2001, and then this would be 2002, and this would be, uh, this is extremely long distance apart, millions and millions and millions and millions of miles apart. There's nothing in there, the, the, you know, the planets do not come back onto their path. They don't. If they did, we most likely would have the same set of information over and over and over like a broken record. Okay? And, uh, and we, we probably get real bored. Uh, uh, it would be like Groundhog Year, you know? Let's go back to the analogy of Einstein field equation of the trampoline, trampoline curving to generate gravity. So basically Einstein said, gravity is the result of space-time curving like the surface of a trampoline. And basically what I say, what we say in this paper is that yes, 
And when space-time curves, it doesn't just curve, but it curls, just like water going down the drain, and that generates spin, angular momentum. And that's the source of the spin of all things. And that is an appropriate way to actually describe physics of angular momentum in the universe. So when we add torque to space-time, the solution gives us a very different picture than a perfect sphere. It generates a torus structure, okay? Which is a sphere with two holes in the middle at the north and south pole. And because it has Coriolis forces, Coriolis forces are the forces that makes water rotate in one direction in the north hemisphere and in the other in the south hemisphere, that makes hurricanes rotate in opposite direction, um, that makes uh, plasma dynamics on the sun rotate in opposite direction. Because Coriolis forces were added to the equation, so what we did is we added a term for torque and the Coriolis forces as a secondary uh, rank uh, tensor on the space-time manifold, we, re, the result is a double torus structure, a double torus manifold that has this dynamic, uh, which is uh, viewed here from above uh, as uh, a rotating uh, yin-yang sign, if you'd like. Original dynamics are visible at various scales. One of them is at the galactic level, which are huge spinning structures with billions of stars in it. Looks like typically big arms of galaxies spinning around and they have vortices that goes from the center out to the edge of the galactic halo that surrounds them. Stars move from this galactic disk out to the halo, down the vortices, and back out again. Stars like Arcturus, for instance, we know, have done that path already. That's the appropriate description even for the atmosphere of our planet. The weather goes from the North Pole down to the equator and then back up, from the South Pole up to the equator and then back down. Even the dynamics on the surface of the Sun are very similar. Of course, here we're looking at it from an external perspective on a small-scale model. When you look at the solar system embedded in the galaxy, Se inscreva no canal se gostou do vídeo, ative as notificações, deixe o seu like.